Let's break down the hand positions for each hand. The right hand is so important <clears throat> because it's kind of the motor. Um, it, it's very important rhythmically, as is the left hand, but if, if, if you have a great left hand and your right hand is not precise or generating and pulling a nice tone out of the instrument, you'll never have quite the power that you want in your playing or the flexibility. So let's, let's talk about it. There's several different styles of right hand plucking. I mean, nowadays, there's probably even a bunch more that are very individual to certain players, but I'm going to give you a bunch of ones that are really practical and the ones that I use most often. So the first one is the one, one finger rest stroke, where the finger... It moves through the string and rests on the string below it. I learned this from my brother who studied classical guitar. So if we, if we play the G string, and we play, where you notice that I've got my thumb planted here. Sometimes I have my, my third and fourth finger on the right hand underneath the A and the E string to keep it from ringing as a muting device which I didn't realize I was doing until I began teaching many years ago. One of my students said, what, how are you muting the strings? They're not ringing well. I kind of unconsciously arrived at this through many years of playing. It just happened, especially with the six-string bass. Many more strings to mute. So the rest stroke is I've got my hand. I, I've got, you know, you can set your thumb. If you like it on the pickup, you can do it. Uh, sometimes I set it on the pickup or... Um, Sometimes on the E string. Depends on what I'm playing. But you notice the, the, the finger goes through the string. So I got all the meat comes through the string and we're pulling a tone. Now the D string, same thing. You're coming through the string and resting on the string below it. Now we're going to do it in the, the A string, resting on the E. And now my, my thumb is resting on the pickup too to make room for that. And then finally, again, resting on the pickup with my thumb, pulling my first finger through the string. This creates tone. It's not picking at it like this, like you see some people who are starting on the instrument, they want to pick lightly at the string. No, you play through the string. You hear the fundamental of the note, and you're going to get body and weight. And, and, and a lot of times, what makes the string louder is, is velocity pull through faster, you get more sound. Um, so that's the one finger. Now sometimes there's a thing called raking too, where we rake across several strings. Like, um, see we're just raking across the strings. It's like a rest stroke across three strings. And that, that, that later we'll find is a very interesting and very useful technique when we play walking bass. So now notice I'm just using one finger. Uh, if you go back in history, you'll notice that James Jamerson, the great Motown innovator, played a lot with one finger. So the one finger rest stroke is a very important part of your right hand picking arsenal. Okay? Okay, now we're going to move on to the alternating picking between the index and the middle finger. Some people even take it much further than I do, and they alternate between the first, the third, and the fourth, <laughs> which I can't even do. But uh, I always found that this was quick enough for me. I don't know. So, so here, we, here we're going to use the first finger and the second finger, and we're going to alternate. Now when you're alternating, you're still kind of resting a little bit on the string below. So that, that's, that's a stroke that you're going to practice with a metronome. And, and you can practice in different rhythmic instrument increments. So here's quarter notes, two, three, four, eighth notes, one, and two, and three, and four. Triplets, triplet, triplet. Back to eighth notes now, sixteenth notes. Now there, I, a lot of times I'm leading with my second finger for some reason. 
but I did practice also leading here. That's leading with the first finger. So you, you know, you can practice doing that as well. And on some of these exercises, I'll show you how you can incorporate making sure you're working on your alternating picking while you're working on a finger exercise with the left hand. So that's the second way. So that's alternating picking. For me, I just use the two fingers. Like I said, some people use all four, and it's amazing. Some people use five. They alternate between the thumb and the four fingers. I sometimes do thumb and three fingers. So say, uh, so it's a, uh, So I'm using really the thumb on the lowest string and the, and the D and the G strings, I'll use the other fingers. Or maybe even, sometimes I'll just do one. Thumb and the first finger. So that, that's another technique. So, and that's for chordal playing, you know, if you're doing a chord melody thing, and we can get into that a little later too, but there's also a kind of a, another way to use the thumb is to, is to roll, is to rake downward with the thumb, just sort of like a. And that's a, that's a, that's a mellow tone. That's just kind of like, a, kind of like strumming, but. sound. One of my favorite ways to um, change the sound with muting is I lay my, my palm on the string and, uh, and pluck with the, with the thumb and, and mute. I sort of have the string muted, dampened like this. Sometimes even uh, I'll mute and use this, the, the, the little finger too. I'm not the little finger, the first finger. Sometimes I even put foam back in here between the pickup and the bridge. And uh, I did that a lot on my latest record um, that's coming out in May called Brooklyn. So uh, more on that later. But I used, I put foam, like the old days, a lot of the bassists would use foam between the pickup and the, and the, and the, and the bridge saddles. So uh, that really deadens it. And that way you can get that muted, thuddy thing without having to change your right hand technique. You can just play freely. So that's another way of getting that. But so the, these are some of the coloristic ways to uh, change things with your right hand. Now, sometimes you know, obviously, by now, uh, the thumb slapping thing has become so part of the mainstream. But I grew up in a time uh, in the '60s before it happened, and in the '70s when Larry Graham started doing it. And that's that's when you use your thumb to hit. So. There's, there's the, the idea of slapping, I mean thumbing first. Now the flat wound strings are not the best sound for the thumbing, but just to show you. So there's the thumb part, where you have to be relaxed enough to get the same attack all the time. And you, you just, you're making sure the thumb hits the string towards the end of the fingerboard. And then the, the first finger, is the, the snap. So. So that's another sound. Then there's the playing with a pick, like guitar players play, which I don't really do much. So I, I, I approximate that with my, with my thumbnail. And sometimes I play with my, my fingernails on my other hands, my other fingers. Or play back by the bridge. Now, the interesting thing about a pick is there are not that many jazz bass players in history that played with a pick on the, on the electric bass. Really only one that I can think of, and that's Steve Swallow, who's amazing. He actually walks bass lines with a pick. And he does upstrokes, believe it or not. I don't know how he does it, but it's phenomenal. And he's able to do it. 
myself. I used it in the studios when people wanted like a, um, an English kind of rock and roll sound. I'd play with a pick. It was only downstrokes. That's all I could do. Um, one of the other guys who's great at it, uh, actually, that I can't, I can't forget Anthony Jackson, too. He was originally a guitar player, the great Anthony Jackson. He plays with a pick incredibly. So, And I also don't want to, I won't, I don't want to forget there was uh, one bassist who played with a pick who had a huge influence on me and millions of others, and that's Paul McCartney. Um, his playing was so melodic with the pick. His tone also was beautiful with the pick. He had different sounds. Um, very lyrical playing with a pick, too. So um, that's a very important example. There's so many guys that played great in rock and roll with a pick. Uh, it would take me a long time to list them all, but uh, I, I, there's so many that I loved. So that's, that's the pick thing. Okay, so now there's the idea of how do you change your tone by moving your, your hand between the bridge and the fingerboard. How does that work? Well, basically, to me, it's simple. It's darker by the bridge, just like on any stringed instrument, uh, by the fingerboard. It's darker by the fingerboard. I hope I said that right. And it's brighter by the bridge. So, um, uh, Jaco Pastorius, the great bassist, he... He definitely played back pickup, and he would, you know, even switch his pickup selector switch to the back pickup to give him a lot of mid-range and bite to his playing. And, and, I, and I'll show you. I'll, I'm going I'm to show you what that sounds like. So you saw what happens when I move my hand um, up over the bridge. I mean, up over the fingerboard. It's kind of liquidy. And then back here. It's more nasal, kind of barking, jazz bass kind of sound. Like, oh, here's the back pickup. I'm going to switch pickups now. You can see. Back pickup is this. That's kind of what Jocko was famous for, that back pickup sound. Then there's in between. That's both of them. That's another sound. And the sound that I'm preferring for this is a, the warmest one. So that we, when we start playing jazz and doing the exercises that are walking and everything, it really sounds full and warm on the way towards an acoustic bass. So those are, those are some of the ways we can use our right hand. And we'll be talking about that a lot in the, you know, as we deal with some of the play-alongs and the lessons and stuff. Um, Pay, it, pay close attention to what I'm doing with my right hand and those things, because I, I, I like to change colors a lot. Um, so um, I hope this, this really kind of opens your eyes to many different things that you can do with your right hand. It's not just playing the same way with the same amount of pressure in the same place all the time. <laughs>